They aren't here to say goodbye when they ask to withdraw treatment. We FaceTime so they can say goodbye. We stop the drips, we turn off the ventilator, and wait. Your hands upon theirs. You think of their family at home sobbing. Someone starts saying a prayer. You can't help but cry. This isn't what we do. Wake up at 6.30 a.m. Priority is making a big pot of coffee for the whole day. Because the place by the hospital is closed. The Starbucks too, it's all closed. On the walk, it feels like Sunday. No one is out, might be the freezing rain, or it's early. Regardless, that's good. Walk in for your 8 a.m. shift. Immediately struck by how the calm of the early morning city is transformed. The bright fluorescent lights of the ER reflect off everyone's protective goggles. There is a cacophony of coughing. You stop, mask up, walk in. You take sign up from the previous team, but nearly every patient is the same, young and old. Cough, shortness of breath, fever. They are really worried about one patient, very short of breath, and the maximum amount of oxygen we can give, but still breathing fast. You immediately assess this patient. It's clear what this is and what needs to happen. You have a long and honest discussion with the patient and family over the phone. It's best to put her on life support now before things get much worse. You're getting set up for that, but you're notified of another patient coming in. You rush over. They're also extremely sick, vomiting. They need to be put on life support as well. Two patients in rooms right next to each other, both getting a breathing tube. It's not even 10 a.m. yet. For the rest of your shift, nearly every hour you get paged. Stat notification, very sick patient, short of breath, fever, oxygen 88%. Stat notification, low blood pressure, short of breath, low oxygen. Stat notification, low oxygen, can't breathe, fever, all day. Sometime in the afternoon, you recognize that you haven't had any water. You're afraid to take off the mask. It's the only thing that protects you. Surely you can last a little longer. In West Africa during Ebola, you spend hours in a hot suit without water. One more patient. By late afternoon, you need to eat. Restaurant across the street is closed. Right, everything is closed. But thankfully, the hospital cafeteria is open. You grab something, wash your hands twice, cautiously take off your mask, and eat as fast as you can. Go back, mask up, walk in. Nearly everyone you see today is the same. We assume everyone is COVID-19. Where did all the heart attacks and appendicitis patients go? It's all COVID. We're all being asked to do things we've never done before. Try to predict which COVID patient will crash if you send them home and which won't. Talk to palliative care, talk to family members. Long discussions about likely outcomes. Listen as family members sob. They aren't here to say goodbye when they ask to withdraw treatment. We FaceTime so they can say goodbye. We stop the drips, turn off the ventilator, and wait. Your hands upon theirs. You think of their family at home sobbing. Someone starts saying a prayer. You can't help but cry. This isn't what we do. You stand by, you wait. This isn't what we do. You stand by, you wait. Time of death, 7.19 p.m. When your shift ends, you sign out to the oncoming team. You share concerns of friends throughout the city without personal protective equipment. Hospitals running out of ventilators. Colleagues have already gotten ill. Some have survived the disease. Unfortunately, other colleagues in the city have not. Before you leave, you wipe everything down. Your phone, your badge, your wallet, your coffee mug, all of it, drowned it in bleach. Everything in a bag, take no chances. You walk out and take off your mask. You feel naked and exposed. The streets are empty. You get home, you strip in the hallway. It's okay, your neighbors know what you do. Your wife tries to keep your toddler away, but she hasn't seen you in days, so it's really, really hard. Run to the shower. You look in the mirror. Indentations of the goggles are still deep on your face. Blisters on the bridge of your nose. Hot shower, rinse it all away. Never happier, time for family. We were too late to stop this virus, full stop. But we can slow its spread. Stay inside. Social distancing is the only thing that will save us now. I survived Ebola. 
I fear COVID-19. This virus has not only infected people all over the world, but it's highlighted. It's amplified the inequalities that have existed for way too long. At this moment of global crisis, we need global solidarity. And never, ever have scientists, frontline providers, grocery workers, and people doing everything that they can every day to keep our society functioning throughout this. Never have they been seen as the heroes that they really are. Thank you.